Hello F11 members and welcome back to part 2 of the Fundamentals of Post-Production Video Tutorials for Issue 75, April 2018. So uh, I've got on the screen in front of me a picture I shot in Villa de Leyva in uh, Colombia uh, last month. And uh, on the left you see the raw straight out of the camera and on the right you see the finished image. So how did I get there? Well, that's what we're going to work through today. Uh, and I want to pay particular attention to the use of the adjustment brush and in particular the settings that we apply to the adjustment brush because it is a tremendously flexible tool, one that I use a lot. Uh, and uh, well, you can see the, the end result there in front of you. Okay, so uh, let's go back to where I started. So go back to loop view here and come back to how the image was imported in the first place. Uh, and again, I've got my presets which are applied on import in there. Teaspoonful of vibrance and a touch of sharpening and the chromatic aberrations removed, nothing else. So what do I need to do? As usual, it always pays to just sit back, look at the image, and before you wade in and start playing with all the tools and sliders, decide. I need to boost the detail a little bit here in the foreground. I waited until I got some human interest, and we've got this family walking through my foreground there. In the background, the famous uh, Plaza Maya in uh, Villa de Leyva mountains above and quite a dramatic sky. Contrast issues here because sun on the bright white buildings in the middle distance and a dramatic sky there. But it's all there. I've captured everything. There's just the tiniest bit of sh clipping of shadows. If I hold my cursor up over the shadow clipping indicator here, you can just see where the blues are starting to appear in that doorway there. You know, I, I really don't worry about seeing into the darkest doorway. So exposure's fine. I just need to bring out all the potential in the image. So first thing I'm going to do is just look at overall my black and my white points. Well, I know I've my black point. I can't adjust that because I'm clipping shadows already. Let's just look at my white point. So I hold down the Alt key and move the white slider to the right until I start to clip and I can make quite an adjustment there, plus 30. Okay, so that's good. And I just want to pull back my highlights. It seems bizarre to adjust your weights and then pull your highlights back, but I don't want this area just to be too, the weights in that area to be too uh, bright. Um, and overall, the image needs darkening down a bit. Um, so I'm going to come down here. And that's giving me a nice kind of tones on the square, the white buildings in the square in the background. That's worked well, but it's had the effect that my foreground now is dark and dingy. Now, of course, I can boost my shadows to bring that back up. Uh, but the trouble is, if I do that, it applies the shadows to all the image. And it starts, if I go to, you know, you can see in the middle distance, it flattens the image somewhat. So I'm going to apply, apply just a touch of shadow recovery there. And now I'm going to deal with my foreground interest. Just use the tone curve to darken the whole picture down a bit more. That's about right, I think. Now, what needs doing now is my foreground needs lifting. It's gone dark and dingy, and I want to add a bit more Drama, pull out the drama in the sky a bit more. So I'm going to use the adjustment brush up here, top right, click on that and up come my tools. Okay, now the first thing I want to do, let's really look at here, the, the, these settings. Uh, size is, I think, self-apparent. Now I'm going to select the area that I want to apply my adjustments doing using the adjustment brush. And to do that, I need to adjust the size of my brush. If I was selecting a really small area, I'd go for a small brush, but this is a big area, so it's a relatively uh, medium-sized brush I'm going to use. And you can use the square brackets key on your keyboard 
to adjust your brush size. I'm using a graphics tablet here, so I can do that here actually quite easily. Uh, and okay, so that's that done. The next thing to look at is feather. Can you see this adjustment here? Now, if you'll notice, if I bring that down, can you see where my adjustment brush is? There are two circles. And the feathering is the area between the inner and the outer circle. And if I want a really soft edge to my brush, which I would suggest you normally do, I go for the maximum feathering of 100. Um, so I'm just going to go and do that. Uh, and now let's look at what the next thing here is, flow. What does flow do? It's a really tough one to answer that. Basically, it controls the rate of application. Uh, so if I come, uh, it's easier if I dis uh, show you rather than try to explain it. So I'm going to come down here, click on Show Selected Mask Overlay there now. And what I do is I just start painting in here, in red, the area that I want to make an adjustment to. Now I'm not doing anything to this area yet. This is just making the selection. Now if I just um, come back on that, and I did that with the flow set at 100. Let's just come back on that. Uh, so I've got no adjustment brush in here now. Go back to that. And now bring my flow back down to right very maybe 20 and start brushing in here. Basically, it adds the adjustment. It adds, it adds the mask overlay very slowly. Personally, I can't see the point of that. I virtually always have it set up here at 100. Uh, and the other thing is the density slider here. We'll come back to auto mask in a minute. This density slider here. If you prefer to build up the area you're selecting with repeated brush strokes, then you could set the density quite low and do it that way. And you just paint, keep painting in until you get where you want. You've got the area selected that you want. Again, I'm going to put it up to maximum, actually, because I find that annoying. I just find I can select very quickly the area I want. And because I've got this area here, can you see it says auto mask? This is really useful. It basically detects hard edges and applies the mask to that edge, which is I think is just great. Now, the other thing that's interesting to know is that I can come down here and just go for a really small brush here and then select this area of that guy's head walking through the frame there. And I can also go and uh, erase. So if I click on erase here now, I can actually adjust my brush size accordingly and fine tune the area I've selected there using the erase. Just take away that area just where the shadow is. Auto mask is good and works well, but that's probably not a hard enough edge for it to determine there, uh, which is why I've gone back into erase. Okay, so now if I click off my mask overlay, and now I can make my adjustments to this area. Now, first thing, I could just brighten the image, but I'm going to actually adjust my whites in that area because there are no bright whites. I can go all the way up here and that has the effect of brightening the image, enhancing the contrast as well. Um, I'm actually going to brighten it a touch just using the exposure slider there. I don't want to go too far else it will look unnatural, uh, but nevertheless this is a really useful thing to be able to do. I'm just going to come select the number there and then use my up and down keys on the keyboard to fine tune just how far I want to go with that. I'd say around about there. Okay, come back on my whites just a touch and put a touch of contrast in there as well. 
and just a hint of saturation because when you boost levels you basically uh, flatten the image some a little bit or desaturate the images a little bit. Very careful not to go too far with that. Uh, and I think that's brought up that area of the image quite well without with it looking relatively natural. So, uh, you know, I'm happy with that. Just a touch more on the whites, maybe. Okay. Now then, next thing I want to do is the sky. And again, I just click on done. So I've uh, done that. And uh, now I'm going to go back to the adjustment brush again. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select a big brush and I'm now going to click on show selected mask overlay and you can see I've got my feathering to 100, I've got my flow to 100, I've got my density to 100. You may care to experiment with these settings and see which what setup works best for you. Uh, bear in mind that nothing is etched in stone yet. All I'm doing is selecting the area that I want to make my adjustments too and because I've got the auto mask function clicked on it's picking up that edge of the hills quite well can you see there well maybe down here it's just uh, losing the plot a bit but uh, nevertheless I can fine-tune that subsequently I'm just gonna come down on you just select a smaller brush and just along here on this edge touch there okay good right click off the show selected mask overlay now I make my adjustments uh, can you now what's important is I've got both of these boxes up here ticked and I can adjust my black and my white points just of this selected area so first thing I'm going to do is go with my blacks and I can darken down the image, improve the contrast by making sure the blacks are richer in that sky area of the sky. Always a subjective call, this. Uh, and the same with the whites. They're a little bit dingy. Go too far and it will tell me where those red blobs appear. Clip in my highlights. And that's really enhanced the contrast of the sky, sky quite radically, hasn't it? Uh, and now I'm just going to darken the sky down just a touch. I want a, a really quite a moody sky. It was a moody sky. That's way too much. Again, I'm finding using the actual slider a bit heavy handed. So I'm going to highlight the numbers here and use the up and down key on my keyboard to get where I want to be. I'd say about there. Uh, and can you see what Lightroom has done, has selected the area. There's a touch of a halo there, though, uh, that's a little bit unsightly. I think my adjustments are a little bit over the top here. So I'm going to just pull them back a bit. Uh, but in essence, that's, click on done, the settings in Lightroom's adjustment tool. Very, very useful. Um, if you uh, want to go back and fine-tune the picture, which I do, fine-tune that selection. If I just click on that grey dot there, and now I'm just going to come down here, click on Arrays, and I'm now actually going to drop this density slider back a touch. Oh, I can't in Arrays. Never mind. I'm just going to Arrays here a little bit of this area because I feel it's giving me too much too much of a halo there uh, and uh, that's how you can fine-tune your selection area really really useful tool and again if I now click on done there and show my before and after image you can see really brought out what's there in the picture and enhanced its drama. So I would uh, urge you to experiment. Uh, practice makes perfect, um, but a very, very flexible tool. Okay, thanks for uh, your attention this month. And as I said in part one, 
uh, suggestions about things we could cover are so, so useful to us. So please do feel free to uh, email us in and let us know what you'd like to see in future video tutorials. Thank you.